So we're here at another PLS cleanup. We're out China Hat Road again. And this cleanup's a little different than most that you've seen us do in the past. Um, in the past, usually the day before the big cleanup day with the volunteers, a group of us come out with heavy equipment, excavators, skid steers, bunch of trailers, tow trucks and all that. And we're hauling the big stuff out, the RVs, the cars, big chunks of metal and some structures even that have been built out here. And, and that's not happening on this cleanup. And that's a good thing because it's not needed on this cleanup. On this one, this is the type of stuff we have. We're, yes, we're still in the same area cleaning up. We're basically working our way through this whole area of the woods with all these cleanups and we're making a dent in it. And that's why, I wouldn't say we're making a dent, we're making some real progress on it. And that's why the big heavy equipment type stuff isn't here anymore. We've got most of that knocked out, at least in the areas that we can. And it's down to dump trailers and awesome volunteers over there picking up by, by hand just to get the rest of this out. And that is an awesome indicator of the progress that this group has made and what these volunteers have done out here that we're, we're getting there, we're getting somewhere. It's, it's really making a difference. The fact that that level of cleanup was not needed. Granted, there is a lot of stuff like this still, but it's stuff that you can just handle by hand. It's not the massive hundreds of thousands of pounds cleanup effort uh, that we're, we're normally doing. And we are very, very happy about that and very thankful for uh, all the volunteers and the businesses that have pitched in and all that to make all this happen. Now that being said, since uh, we're not doing the big heavy equipment stuff and big truck stuff, on this one uh, I get to be a crew leader uh, for team number one here. Uh, awesome crew that is just hauling ass through this stuff. Uh, we got four teams out here today plus a whole nother group at Cabin Butte doing the cleanup there and they are making some serious progress. So I'm probably not going to film this super great because I'm working uh, hand crew today and picking up trash and I don't want to be talking to a camera and walking around while everyone else is picking up trash. So I'm going to do that for a bit. We'll keep checking in. You see what this looks like now. I'll show you the progress of what it looks like when we're done and we're just going to keep working our way through the woods. Yeah, wouldn't wouldn't the, a picture in front of the trailer be a lot better than in front of my pile of crap truck? <laughs> yeah. There we go. Yeah. So this is the crew that turned what you just saw into this. All the trash is gone. It's all loaded in the trailer. They just kicked ass out here. One of the other crews caught up to us. Um, so they finished the area. We're going to continue on down here, but. Look at this. You saw what it looked like just a couple minutes ago. And those amazing people turned it to this. Just awesome. Look, even Gavin showed up. What's up? Yeah. What's up? Yeah, like look at the difference here. Absolutely amazing. Very, very good job. This makes me happy. Just beautiful forest, especially with what it looked like when these amazing people showed up. Very happy. Someone's using it. That's good. So we're cruising down the road. We stop right here. You'll see 
it's not just homeless people and people living out here that trash the place. In fact, a lot of them keep it really clean and help clean up. This is clearly, what is this, looks like a landscaper? Yeah. You've got concrete, you've got bricks, you've got uh, needles and shavings that are not from these trees. This is somewhere, and trash mixed in with it. This is somewhere that most likely a landscaper or a contractor came out here and dumped this stuff in the woods to avoid paying dump fees. And you see a lot of that out here too. It's not just homeless people are bad at all. It's a very mix of what the problem actually is out here. So got the trash of that cleaned up real quick, but that's another big problem out here is this area is so close to town. That's why the whole issue is so bad is city of 100,000 people, five minutes over there. And then this is 1.6 million acres, I believe of just open public land. Oh, carpet pieces there. Um, so it's a very easy place for people to get out to you that's very unregulated just due to its sheer size. And contractors, landscapers who are not uh, very legitimate, well, uh, I'm sure they charge that customer for cleaning up and hauling off the debris from their yard or whatever. And they just drove right by the dump, drove five minutes out here and dump it for free. But that's also why there's so many people living out here is Bend is an incredibly expensive place to live. It, it's very expensive. And a lot of people can't afford it. And this is five minutes from town. So it's an easy place for those people to live and still like most of them still go to work, go to jobs. They have vehicles, they drive back and forth. They have all their insurance, everything. Um, they're very legitimate jobs, vehicles, insurance, everything else. They're just, they don't have a, they can't afford a home in town. So they live out here and that's kind of the only way they can afford to live in this area, which is a whole nother problem all in itself. And I know you guys on these videos see the trash spots and the bad spots. You don't see the camps that are clean and nice and have a decent vehicle parked in the yard and there is no trash and they're taking care of everything and it looks good. And none of us have any problem with those people at all. Like them living out here like, that's fine. They're taking care of everything. No issue at all. It's, you just see, here's a tire. Um, you just see the people who, or not the people who, you see the trash left behind by the people who are not taking care of the area. And that's what is a problem. The problem is not the people who are working a job, doing their best, taking care of their place and living out here because that's what they have to do. That's not the problem at all. There's a problem that's causing that, yes, but that's not the problem that uh, is creating this mess. Okay, the timing of that could not have worked out any better from what I was just talking about. Yeah. So we run across this guy here and um, he's got his truck there and he had bags of trash loaded in the back of it. So I walked over like, hey, you got any trash you want us to, to haul out while we're going through, which we do. If, if, if there's camps we come across that people are, are occupied and we'll pick up their trash and take it out with us while we're cleaning up the rest. And he was just thankful as could be because he was loading up to go to the dump. So he's one of the ones that's living out here because that's what he has to do, but he's not trashing the place. He's going to the dump, all that, it was all bagged up in like nice contractor bags, just like what we're doing. So he could take it to the dump and not trash the place. And you look around his camp, there was no trash on the ground, yep. nothing, no oil, no nothing. It was like, it was taken care of. Those people, I have no problem with. I want to support and help out those people. It's, the problem is, there's a few who make a very bad mess out here that make those people look bad as well. And that's what I don't want these videos to do is make those people who are doing it right look bad because they're not. There's just, there's some bad ones and we need to make sure there's the separation there. And as we saw by the landscape uh, pile and the con contractor pile back there, it's not just the people living out here who do create problems as well. So as you can see, we're all starting to kind of get piled up here. And that is because we're all running out of spots to clean up, which is frustrating. We got all this out here and we're trying to figure out what to clean up and we can't find it. And then we're realizing like, that's amazing. We're running out of stuff to clean up. Like finally, that is the best problem we could have right now. So frustrating that we can't find stuff to clean up. <laughs> A little bit. Best problem we could possibly yeah. have. Absolutely. Early day. Yeah. And the fact that we're running out of stuff to clean up, yeah. it means we're like 
finishing. Yeah. Finally. So we're driving just the, the main road, working our way back, just picking up the little roadside trash because a lot of the big cleanup areas are done. So we're back at the main staging area. I thought I had a pretty good load of stuff in my dump trailer. But then Kevin shows up and puts us all to shame. And he's even fixing people's tires who ran over some nails and got a hole in them. So don't burn pallets out in the woods and stuff. It, it just gets people flat tires. Luckily Kevin's gonna take care of, but this is the PLS trailer, as you can see. And uh, yeah, they definitely found some stuff. Every volunteer accounted for. Uh, thank you all, for your... all right, we just had lunch here back at main base camp, and uh, oh, I lied. Uh, looks like Trevor did have his skid steer out here. So one skid steer, but that's a whole lot better than 15 and a whole bunch of tow trucks and trailers and all that. So yeah, he's got a really nice one. Um, anyway, I've got a dump load I got to take to the dump, and what I should mention that I totally forgot earlier while I was talking about the amazing people who have put in so much to make this happen is the companies that have helped out as well and uh, this cleanup here is sponsored by Polish Homes and I'll put a link to that down below they're, they're not sponsoring this video they're sponsoring the cleanup and PLS totally different but I'm shouting them out in this video because they're sponsoring PLS and then uh, they've made a very nice sponsorship here that is paying for the tool, some of the tools and equipment we're using to pay for these dump fees to go to the dump and paying to help keep PLS going. So massive thank you to them. Maybe I'll have to look into them soon because my wife needs a lot more closet space and our house is very tiny. So might have to look into that. But uh, also 10 Barrel Brewing, they supplied, uh, made a sponsorship donation plus uh, all the beverages for after the cleanup here and quite a few other companies. I'll try to list all those down below. But between the people and the businesses coming together. Like I said, this cleanup just showed what a massive difference has been made out here. And we do have another cleanup coming up uh, in August. And that one, uh, we're gonna be moving down to Lapine and working on an area down there. We're not sure 100% just yet. We're still doing some scouting. But we've made such a huge amount of progress out here. And the areas that we have cleaned are staying clean. And that is super awesome to see. So we're gonna move to a new spot and try to make the same amount of difference down there and uh, just try to keep this thing going and keep these public lands open and usable for everyone to enjoy so thank you guys for watching these videos because you guys watching these videos is another reason all this keeps going so you guys are also just as much a part of this as us out here and i thank you for that and we'll see you next time